In this video, we are going to start placing floor tiles and furniture on our map. Okay, let's get going. If you are using my starter project, you can go to the projects tab, assets, prefabs, and here you will find the different prefabs for the objects that I have prepared for you. So we have the big bed, the chair, the floor, and the table parent. So let's open the table parent prefab. And you're going to see that we have the table object with a pivot point in the bottom left corner, which is important for the placement system on our cells, since each cell, as I have mentioned previously, is defined by its bottom left corner. In the hierarchy, you will see that we have the table parent and the table. So this structure is only here because we can now ensure that the table is placed in such a way that the table parent has always the pivot point in the bottom left corner and we can place the table in uh, this way that we can ensure that it will fit. We can also see in the scene view that this table takes two cells. Now, if we go to the chair parent, you are going to see that this is the same structure in the hierarchy, but now the chair takes only one cell. So we are going to have to consider this when creating our placement system. Okay, let's exit the prefab mode using this arrow in the hierarchy. And now we can start creating our system. So since I have mentioned that we need to consider what is the size of the object, like the big bed is taking four cells, two by two, we need to create a database. So let's go to our project tab scripts and let's create a new C sharp script. So right click, create C sharp script. You're going to create objects, database, SO, since this will be a scriptable object. Let's open this script. Get it right. To make a scriptable object out of this, we are going to change the mono behavior to a scriptable object. And now we are going to delete the start and update. To be able to create this, we are going to add at the top of the class definition an attribute create asset menu so we can create this from the create menu in the editor. Here we are going to create a public list and we are going to create a new type this will be object data and this will be a new type that we are going to create let's call it objects data this list and this will be it so we need to create this object so let's copy the name and we are going to define below the scriptable object definition a new class we are going to play place the name and open the parentheses and this will be the objects data that we are going to create. Let's define this new type. So we're going to define it below the scriptable object definition public class. And let's type the same name object data. And we are going to open the parentheses. Now there should be no more red squiggly lines. This will be the object definition. To make sure that we can display it in the inspector, we are going to add at the top of this new attribute serializable. And if this is underlined red, you can right click on this quick action and say using system, system library will be imported at the top of the script and now we can use it. Now I'm going to paste here the uh, properties that we are going to be using. Again, you can use the GitHub repository to just copy the code or you can define those as just fields, but we want to use properties to pre prevent other classes from modifying the data that we save here because those are the data definitions of our objects. So here we are going to define a public string name. You can type property by typing prop, pressing tab twice, and you're going to be able to modify the name and the type. Now I'm going to define a public string name. This will be the name of the object. And we need to add field serialized field attribute above it so that we can actually display it in the inspector. We're going to have a public getter so we can always access this field, but a private setter so that we can always set it through the inspector, but nothing else outside of this class can change it. We're going to define uh, the string name. Next, we are going to have a public int ID. Again, the same definition, but the ID will now be a unique ID defining this object each object needs to have a unique ID for our system to work properly. Next, we are going to have a serialized field vector to int size. The, the default size will be vector to int dot one. And again, we cannot really modify it outside of this class. The, the fact is that each object has a specific size. The smaller size is one by one. Last field that we are going to have 
I have copied one too many of those attributes. We're going to have a field serialized field public game object prefab. So this will be the reference to the prefabs that I have shown you uh, in our projects tab. We're going to assign it here to the data as well. Okay, if you have this typed or if you have copied it from the GitHub, just control S to save the script and let's go back to Unity. Okay, if everything went well, we should now be able to go to some folder in our project. Let's right click create and we should be able to select at the top objects database so let's create this scriptable object and we are going to call it database okay here we can add in this list that we should be able to see four new elements and we are going to select the first one and since we already have a ui in our game view we have this floor chair bed and table we can define in the same order those although the only thing that will matter here is the id I'm going to define floor and we are going to give it id 0 the size is one by one we are going to assign the prefab so let's go to our prefabs and i'm going to select the floor we're going to get the uh, elements extended and we are going to select the second one we are going to call chair and we are going to set the id to one one by one the size and we are going to assign the chair parent you can do the same with the rest so we have the big bed we're going to give it ID 2 and the size of the big bed, if we open it, it is 2 by 2. The big bed has 2 by 2 and we are going to assign the uh, prefab big bed parent. We are going to select the last element table. And the table needs to have the ID 3, since I have mentioned those needs to be unique. We're going to assign the table parent and the size was 2 on X and 1 on Y. And now we should be good to go with this database. To be able to use it, when we click our mouse button, I want to be placing those objects. We are going to reopen the input manager script. Great. Here at the top of this script, we are going to add two new fields, public, event, action. If you can see those red squiggly line, right click, quick action and say using system, system library will be imported. The action event is just a way for us to inform other classes that the user has clicked the mouse button. So we are going to create on clicked and we're going to add one more on exit. So we can exit the placement mode when we click escape. Now to be able to call those, we are going to create update method and we are going to type here if since we are using the old input system input dot get mouse button down and we are going to type index zero which is the left mouse button we are going to call on clicked question mark dot invoke and this is how we can safely call the action event and if something is listening some method is assigned to it we are going to inform this method that the click that button was clicked and something should happen another method we need is if again input dot get key down and we are going to type key code escape and here we are going to call on exit question mark dot invoke last method that we need is to prevent clicking when we are interacting with our ui so we are going to define public bool is pointer over ui and we are going to return here i'm going to use just the lambda expression so equal and greater sign and we are going to type event system and again, if you see this, we are going to click event system and the unity engine system should be imported the library at the top of the script. And we are going to type current is pointer over game object and finish this by calling this method. And this will return us true or false if our pointer is over a UI object. So when we are over hovering over our UI, we are not going to be able to click. Okay, let's save this input manager script. And now let's reopen our placement system. Here we are going to need to add a couple more fields at the top. So let's uh, create some serialized field and we are going to create private objects database SO database. So this is our reference to the database. We are going to have a private a int selected object index. And this will be set to be minus one by default. So if this is minus one, we have not selected an object from our database. Lastly, to tr uh, trigger on and off the grid visualization, we are going to create a serialized field, private game object, and we are going to call it grid visualization. Okay, 
So now we should be able to access the data that we have defined as well as to trigger on and off the grid visualization. Let's create a start method. And in the start method, we are going to call a method called stop placement. And we are going to define it, right click on this, quick actions, and we are going to generate this method and we are going to define it in a bit. Let's define another method, public void start placement. And we're going to pass here int ID. As you recall, we have assigned ID to each data or object data that we have created. We are going to call it from our UI by passing the ID of an object that we want to be placing. First of all, we are going to say selected object index equals database dot objects data find index. We are going to pass here the name of the parameter that we want to take from our list. We are going to call it data. So basically this is like a for loop when the data is one item from our for loop. And we want to type here if the data ID equals the ID that we are passing here. So basically instead of writing for loop, we can type index, uh, find index and we can pass this data lambda expression. And this is the condition. If data dot ID equals this, we are going to return the index of this object, this data object from our objects data list. So now we need to check, of course, if our selected object is uh, less than zero. So in this case, we do not have any object because find index will by default return minus one if it doesn't find the data that matches this condition. By the way, this data is just an arbitrary name. You could call it X or whatever. So in this case, we are going to debug dot log error and we are going to log error. We are going to add a dollar sign in front of this so we can type no ID uh, found and we are going to add parentheses and we can pass here the ID. So this is, I think, called interpolated string. We are going to return here because we do not want to start the placement if we do not have a valid ID. If we have a valid ID, so the index is greater than zero, we are going to call the grid visualization and we are going to set active, this object set active to be true. So we want to start showing it. And as you might recall, we had this uh, cell indicator that we are showing constantly. So we're going to call cell indicator set active true. So we want to start showing our preview where we are going to place this object. We also want to assign to our input events. As you might recall, we have defined in our input manager those events. So input manager on click plus equals, we are going to type place structure. And this will be a new method. We do not add here the parentheses. We can right click, pick action and generate this method. And this will be this method that we are going to call. We are also going to call input manager dot on exit. And we are going to plus equals so to add a listener to this event. And we are going to type stop placement, the method that we have defined previously. One more bug that we might have is that if we press another UI button, we are going to start placement. So we need to stop the placement. So let's stop the placement before we restart and reassign the place structures to the on click and stop to the on exit because now we are going to assign the second time to on click uh, the uh, place structure method. Okay. So now we can finish writing the stop placement because basically we want to do the reverse. So let's copy those four lines and we are going to control C, copy them, go to the stop placement. First of all, we are going to say, uh, set selected object index equals minus one to reset this. And we are going to paste those, uh, those lines copied from above. And we are going to change set active to be false, set the cell indicator false to hide it. And we are going to set the plus equals to be minus equals. So we are going to unassign our methods from those two events so that we cannot really start placing objects or we can't really actually place objects or we can't really exit anything anymore. Now let's go to the last method that we have defined here, the place structure. So here we have uh, to check if our input manager is over UI. So in case we are over pointing our pointer over UI, we are going to simply return. Next, let's slide down to the update method because we are basically going to copy this code or most of it. So let's copy it and let's go back to our place structure method. 
So below we are going to paste it. We want to get the mouse position. We want to get the grid position. And we are going to, of course, uh, use the grid cell to world. But we do not need this mouse indicator. And we are going to instead create our game object. Uh, game object. Or structure equals instantiate. And we are going to call it uh, here database. Dot objects data. We're going to access using square brackets the selected object index and we are going to add dot prefab so that's how we are going to grab our game object prefab so that we can swap it by swapping the selected index now last thing that we need is go to the last line and we are going to change this to be game object transform position equals grid dot cell to world and actually i don't like this name too much so i'm going to use ctrl r and click again ctrl r and we are going to, ch to change it to a new object Okay, so now it is more clear what it is. So what this code will do is uh, when we press our mouse button, when we are over our grid, we are going to instantiate a new object and we are going to place it at the position of our cell. Lastly, we need to slide down to the update because as I have mentioned, we are going to hide the cell indicator in case we are not going to be in the placement mode or we are not going to start our placement. So here we are going to check if selected index is less than zero we are going to return because we do not want to move anything we are not going to check the position because we are not in the placement mode okay i think we are done with this script so we are going to save this and let's go back to unity great first thing that we need to do is go to our building system select our placement system and we need to assign here the values so the database is in our scripts let's assign it and the grid visualization is in our grid parent and this is the plane so i think we have renamed this to grid visualization or if we didn't we can rename it now and let's save our project next thing is in our game view we can see those ui elements and in our hierarchy we have this ui parent object panel and here we have the build panel and here we have uh, four uh, objects for UI buttons. So those are corresponding to the floor, chair, the bed, and the table. We can select one, click F, and go to the 2D mode in the scene view. And you can see that those are here. First, second, third, and fourth. So we are going to select one of those UI buttons, and we need to find the button component and the on-click event. Here we are going to use this plus icon, and we are going to expand the building system, and we are going to assign placement system here. And we are going to select no function to be the placement system and we are going to select the uh, start placement i think we had start placement that takes an int value and we are going to pass zero because zero was the int id corresponding to the floor definition let's select the second ui button again do the same placement system as the object function placement system and we are going to assign the start placement and now we need to be passing the id one since this was defining the chair the third button let's do the same and we are going to assign the id 2 and the last button let's do the same assign placement system select start placement and assign the id 3 and those will be corresponding to the ids defined in our data object okay last thing that i want to do is let's exit the 2d mode in our scene view we had this grid visualization and we had this input manager which was detecting the placement layer mask the default. Since we are now going to def create objects that will also be on the default layer, let's go to the top right corner of Unity, select the layer, default, add layer. And we are going to add, for example, on layer 3, placement. Okay, now let's go to the input manager. We are going to now select a placement layer mask to be placement and uncheck the default. Now let's select the grid visualization and let's set this to be on the layer placement. So now only if this is visible, we are going to be able to select the position on it and we are going to be detecting it. Okay, if you are done with those changes, make sure to save your scene and let's press play. Okay, so now if you press play, you will see that the grid is gone. But if we select one of those buttons, you will see that we can now see the grid cell visualization as well as we can press mouse button to place objects. I have added some sound just to make it a bit less dull. We are going to select the table and you can see that we can place table. We can select the bed and place bed. We can press escape to exit the placement system and we can see that now we do not see any preview. 
we can select the bed again and the problem that we have here now is that since we do not have any checks we're going to be able to place objects over each other which in case of the floor this is great but not so much when we are placing furniture so that's what we are going to fix in the next video now if you want to add sounds to the placement system just add an audio source to your placement system in the contents uh, in the sounds you can find the sounds and all i did in the script was add the audio source reference and when we are placing the structure i'm calling the source dot play okay see you in the next video